Hi, my name is Justin Schauf and I'm the founder and run our engineering team here at Patch My PC. In this video, I'm excited to announce a new feature called Patch My PC Defined Scripts that we released in version 1.33 of our publishing service. This feature is going to allow us to automatically opt in for scripts that are going to provide a better update experience for certain products. So for example, we have about eight products today that have a Patch My PC Defined Script enabled for them. The first one that we're going to look at here is Java. So in order to see if there's actually a script defined on a product that we opt in by default, you can right click that product. And if it's enabled, you're going to see a new context menu item called patch my PC defined pre or post update installation scripts. So in our uh, case, we will have a recommended script for Java by default. Now, what happens when we click this, we can see that we have two separate types of scripts. We have what we call recommended scripts. That's something that's going to be enabled by default within a product that we define that's going to help the update experience be better. But with the uh, recommended scripts, you do have the ability where if you don't want the customization that's defined within that script, you can disable that. Now, in the event that it's a required script, now we don't have any required scripts today, but we may in the future. This is something that would have to run in order for the product update to be successful. So jumping back to the recommended script for Java, what we can see within this pane here is that we do provide a description to tell you why we have this script enabled by default and what exactly it does. So in this example of Java, we can see that the pre-update script that we have defined automatically is going to automatically remove previous versions of Java runtime for that architecture of the product. Now this is a recommended script for Java because we're not able to automatically remove previous versions by default natively using their installer. The reason for that is if we define the remove older JRE switch, it actually uninstalls both architectures at the same time. So it's not a method that we could use to properly update that because in the event that you have both the 32 and the 64 bit of Java, for instance, if uh, the 32 bit ran first, for example, if we use the native switch from Oracle, it would remove both versions. And then when the 64 bit version of Java went to install, it would do a scan and it would see that that update is no longer applicable. So you may get left with one version. So that's why we're gonna be using a defined script to automatically remove previous builds as a pre-update installation by default. Now there's a few other products that we have defined scripts on today. That's going to be the Adopt uh, Open JDK for the different products here. It's essentially the same reason though. We're gonna be uh, running this so that we can automatically remove previous builds of Adopt Open JDK JRE by default. And then the same uh, instance for the Amazon product that also is uh, like a Java runtime, for example. That one also doesn't automatically remove previous builds. So we have a defined script set for that. Now within the description of this video, we are gonna link out to a KB article that's going to include all the defined scripts so you can understand what products may have it in the future as well. Now to show you what this actually looks like on the client side, I'm gonna go ahead and apply my settings here, and then we're going to run a synchronization. Now while we wait for the synchronization to complete, we'll pause the video and let that update publish. All right, so the synchronization of the Java update completed and the update was published successfully. Now, since we have the option to auto sync our SCCM software update point, we can look over here and the sync auto occurred. We also have an automatic deployment rule that will automatically deploy that Java update. So it automatically created our software update group and we can in fact see that the Java update has auto been deployed. So since this was automatically deployed to our client, if we jump over on the client side, we can see that we do in fact have a client with an outdated version of Java 8. We see it's currently version uh, 161. So we can of course see that that latest dot 211 is showing up as needed. So if we go ahead and click off that installation, what we're gonna see here is that if we open our SCCM client logs under the CCM logs folder, we're gonna have this new script called patch my PC script runner. This is gonna be a log file that shows any installation of third party updates coming through our product. So we're gonna see different actions that take place here. Now, the first thing that we notice here is that we did in fact run that PowerShell script that we use for the auto uninstall. So if we jump over and do a refresh, we can in fact see that Java 8 update 161 was automatically removed 
within our update process. Now for this update, we did also have some other action enabled, such as automatically closing the processes for Java, as well as doing a few different items such as enabling logging. So we can see that we do in fact have the Java installer log file getting created as well, because we had that enabled within our publishing tool as a right click option. So here we can see we had logging enabled. Now, in addition to that, we uh, did also disable updates. So what we can see is that when we ran the auto uninstall script, we can see that everything works successfully. We then ran the JRE installer. And then once that was complete, we turned off updates using different registry values. And then we performed that update. So on the client side, essentially what happens is the script is automatically gonna run based on whether it's a pre or post update script that we define to perform that action. So in our case, we can see that everything looks great. It automatically removed the previous version prior to installing the latest Java runtime. And uh, that's pretty much what this feature is uh, going to do. It's gonna make that installation experience better for some of the more complex products. Now in the future, we are open to adding additional customizations. So for example, one scenario that we might add in the future would be to have a patch my PC defined script for a product that can do something like an Oracle Java runtime migration to say a adopt open JDK in case you ever wanted to move from Oracle where it's now paid for business to something like the adopt open JDK where that's not paid. If you have any ideas like that where we could uh, provide some value, do some custom options when we're installing different updates, please leave that in the comment below. I hope this video was helpful and thank you for watching.